Now, there's been a huge plunge in vaccination rates. We reported on this last week. The Hollywood Reporter was up in arms, concerned that the wealthiest, most educated elite people were not getting their children vaccinated like they should. Now we see another article where they're talking about a huge plunge in kindergartners' vaccination rates, and the officials are stumped. They're amazed. They say since 1950, however, the number of vaccines that children under six are expected to obtain has grown by 414%. Let's put that in perspective, a 414% increase in vaccines. Think a few decades ago, did you see everyone hawking vaccines everywhere? In grocery stores, in shopping centers, at drug stores, everywhere. I mean, basically you can get a vaccination when you get a fill up in your car anymore. We have seen, however, a much greater rise in autism, something that was also never seen before. Back in the 1960s, it was just one in 2,500 kids that came down with autism. Now that number is one in 68. That's how common autism is. That's about a 3,700% increase. Now the article points out to say that it is a lie that diseases will spread without vaccinations at a 95% rate. That's what they're pushing as part of the narrative to try to coerce people into vaccinating their kids at this much, much higher rate. They talk about a herd immunity. Well, you don't need to have everyone vaccinated to get a herd immunity. That's part of the herd mentality. If your child is vaccinated, then if that vaccine is effective, they are protected from that disease. And hopefully, you would hope that it's safe. That doesn't appear to be the issue. And that needs to be the first issue. The first issue of the medical community should be do no harm. Now, they go on to say that most states fail to meet that goal of 95% immunity that the CDC puts out there. They say that rates ran, have run as low as 65% in Colorado in years past and 75% in Florida without seeing a massive outbreak of diseases. And again, it is a question of risks. What are the risks of your child getting something like autism versus having measles for a week? You need to be informed of that risk as a parent, you have a right to know. Now, as they proceed with this, scientists are grappling with the ethics of how they proceed with Ebola vaccines. Everything must be solved with a vaccination, of course, and they haven't proved them to be either safe or effective. And so the question is, how do we prove Ebola to be safe and effective? Once you have proven that it's safe, and they say that's a process that normally takes a very long time, we would hope that it does. We've seen that the CDC for a very long time has covered up safety issues of vaccines. They kept it a secret for 10 years after they lied about it on their study, but presumably that's something that would be vetted over a long period of time. But at what point do you tell people that these things are effective so now you can go mingle among the people that have Ebola without any protective clothing? Yet, throughout this article, and this is an article from the New York Daily News, they are talking about moving forward anyway. They say that, should an unproven vaccine be given to everyone or to just a few? Should it be offered to healthcare workers first? Should the young be given it or the old? Should it be used first in Liberia where Ebola is everywhere? These are the issues that they're looking at and yet they say we must proceed. We don't really have time to fully vet this vaccine. That's what is most troubling about this entire scenario. Introducing the first proprietary oxygen-based intestinal cleanser, OxyPowder, backed by FDA-approved phase one, two, and three clinical trials. All the toxins from the air, the food, the water, ultimately ends up in the gut or affects the gut. Take your health into your own hands and start cleansing your body today with OxyPowder. Secure your OxyPowder today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com.